Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to this press conference with Minister Amina Mohammed of the Republic of Kenya. Before I give Minister Mohammed the floor, a few housekeeping points. This press conference involves journalists who are participating in person and also via WebEx. If you are participating via WebEx and would like to ask a question, please raise your hand by pressing the icon at the bottom of your screen. I would also be grateful if all journalists would please identify themselves and their news organizations before taking the floor. Interpretation in the room will be provided in English, French, and Spanish. The complete bio of Minister Mohammed is available now on the WTO website, and the statement she has just delivered to the General Council will be on the site very soon. Minister Mohammed will give a brief opening statement, and then we will take your questions. We will have precisely 30 minutes for this press conference. Minister Mohammed, you have the floor. Thank you very much, um, Atif. Uh, members of the press, it's an honor and a pleasure to be back in the WTO today and to be speaking with you. I know that for many of you dialing in, this virtual meeting format is a challenge. <laughs> but I'm grateful to those who have worked, Atif, to make it possible. I've spent the last two hours listening to the WTO membership, answering their questions and outlining my vision and experience that I believe I can bring to the role of DG WTO. This vital system is being tested as never before. The WTO was already in difficulties before COVID-19 struck. Its negotiating function had faltered with only limited successes in the last 25 years, despite the launch of the Doha round of negotiations at the beginning of the century. Trade tensions have increased and the dispute settlement system has been compromised. There is widespread acknowledgement among WTO members that the WTO is in urgent need of reform. There are three key areas where the WTO membership needs to focus, reform, recovery, and renewal. We need to cap recapture the visionary inspiration of the original architects of the system. Governments must breathe new life into the WTO so it can play a key role in helping recovery from the pandemic and in rebuilding economic resilience. Reviving trade is essential to recovery worldwide, to boosting growth and sustainable development and to easing the social and economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Once recovery is underway, however, we still face the need to update the trading system to take account of crucial global issues, issues like climate change, the digital revolution, poverty, and sustainable development. The WTO should be where governments come together to cooperate on formulating the best trade policy responses among themselves share best practices and reaffirm key principles. The WTO membership does not all share the same reform priorities. This makes it essential for them to work together to build convergence around elements that they can all support. I believe we can break the cycle of despair and enter into a new phase of hope and realism. I know that I have what it takes to be Director General of the WTO to help the WTO make progress on crucial issues. And I know this because during my time here in Geneva as ambassador and later as minister, I have severally been appointed by the membership to chair WTO bodies. And that includes the ministerial conference. So I'm acutely aware that this is an organization driven by its members. I'm committed wholeheartedly to working collaboratively and inclusively to make this organization work better for not only its members, but for the whole world. As Director General, I would use my extensive experience to support the membership, work with them for reform and renewal of the WTO. I'm a strong advocate for the value of the multilateral trading system and the need to make it more effective. With my candidacy, I intend to offer a fresh perspective 
one that is broad and inclusive, ensuring all members are involved in and contribute to decision making. And I'll thank you very much for your attention and I welcome your engagement. Thank you. Thank you very much. The first question is for Christiane Ulrich of DPA. Christiane, you have the floor, please. Hello, Minister Mohammed. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, this is not your first run. You have uh, tried once before and you were, were not chosen. What are the lessons that you have learned from that campaign? And why should countries that did not support you at that time, why should they vote for you now? Thank you. Uh, let me begin by saying it was just a different, uh, different time. Um, I enjoyed participating uh, in the selection process last time. I was uh, very supportive of the candidate that was chosen uh, eventually, and I think um, we should all thank him for the amazing work that he has done during uh, the, the time that he has held uh, that, that, that post. Um, I think that um, since 2013, when I first ran to date, uh, the things that uh, I have participated in uh, that make me a candidate that is worth considering. One of them is basically chairing the Nairobi Ministerial. And um, you know, you're a journalist, so if you remember, uh, it had been declared um, a failure before it even started. And uh, we were able to turn uh, that around using my diplomatic skills, my experience here in this house. I told the members that I know the corridors here. I have walked them, I have negotiated in different corners of this of this corridor uh, to get results for the multilateral trading system. And, and so uh, we were able to have a very successful ministerial conference. We were able to agree on an agreement that had eluded members for a very long time, the Export Subsidies Prohibition Agreement. And uh, we were also able to uh, agree on an ITA too uh, uh, that also uh, journalists had said would never happen during the Nairobi ministerial. And, and, and so I'd just like to say that um, the experiences that I've had since then, the skills that have developed, my vision as a politician, all this give me hope that in fact this is the right time for me to head this organization. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is for Bryce Bashuk and then to Laurent, please. Bryce, you have the floor. Bryce Bashuk with Bloomberg BNA. Er, Bloomberg, um, thank you for, uh, for your comments. Um, you mentioned the export subsidies deal uh, in Nairobi. Um, you, you were part of a group of, a uh, small group of negotiators who hashed that deal out in the middle of the night, and then you presented it to uh, the delegations the next day as a fait accompli. I'm wondering, why do you believe this is the right approach to trade negotiations, per particularly at a time when a deficit of trust is, is such a big issue here? Oh, but that, that's actually not the reality. Uh, the truth is that during the negotiations, uh, we were discussing and consulting in different formations. And every time um, an issue was discussed, we went back to the membership and we negotiated with different uh, groups of memberships uh, because the WTO is a member-driven organization. Um, you also negotiate, uh, you know, you don't negotiate top down. Yeah? Uh, you need to make sure that um, everybody participates in a negotiation. And, and at the end of the day, you, you, you must have consensus in order for an agreement right, uh, to, be, uh, to be reached and adopted. Mm? Uh, if there was a feeling that uh, uh, anybody was left out, they could have stopped the negotiations from happening. They could have stopped the agreement from being reached. Uh, but I think that Nairobi was a fantastic example of how um, ministerial uh, negotiating conference uh, should actually work. Uh, because it was bottom up. Mm? We had different sessions with different members of different groups, um, you know, meeting them, talking to them about their issues, uh, learning what they really wanted uh, to see in this agreement. And, and in the end, I think that uh, all of us were very excited about the results of that negotiation. Um, you know, so, so it's not true that it was uh, negotiated in a closed room. Um, I think that everybody participated and everybody was included. The next question is for Laurent. Laurent, vous avez la parole. Laurent Ciro, Swiss uh, News Agency Minister. Uh, the U.S. and your government are uh, discussing a free trade agreement, which is highly scrutinized by quite a lot of members. 
Uh, do you consider it as a potential advantage or a potential obstacle in, in that race for, for WTO? Well, I think it's one of very many FTAs. Ours is just beginning. <laughs> Others have been negotiated, concluded by members of the of the WTO, and I don't think that it has um, in any um, adverse way, uh, you know, affected either their membership or the issues they're addressing or their participation uh, in conversations here or negotiations here. Um, I think it's uh, it's um, it's um, a step that uh, needed to be taken by my by my country. Um, uh, it's a negotiation that is just going to begin. I think it provides a model for how FTAs should be negotiated across the continent um, if, if, if required. It's also going to be open for others in my region, in my sub-region, to come on board if they so, uh, if they so wish. Uh, you know, so, so it's not, um, I don't think it's, it's, it's a negative uh, thing. I think an FTA uh, between uh, Kenya and the US uh, uh, should be something that is celebrated um, and welcomed. Um, and because as I said, it will be a framework for any other FTAs that could happen on the continent. Thank you very much. I have a WhatsApp question here from a journalist in Nairobi, from Sharon Atenieno, Atenieno from Science Africa. And Sharon's question is, were you to assume this position, what would you do differently? Uh, Sharon, I would do a lot differently. Um, uh, my experiences um, uh, are different. Um, I think that my skills are different. They've been honed over many years of diplomatic um, uh, life. My vision as a politician, um, uh, which is a very forward-looking uh, vision, uh, a very uh, supportive vision for the uh, multilateral trading system and for the for the WTO. Um, I, I would. Um, hit the ground running. I think that's what I'll do differently um, uh, because I think it's time for that. Uh, the organization is at a crossroads. The multilateral system is facing challenges and it needs an experienced um, you know, negotiator to come in and support the work that needs to be, uh, to be done here. But somebody who actually understands how the system, how the system works, um, uh, that it's a member driven. Uh, you know, that you have to support the members to reach agreement. Uh, that yes, as a secretariat, you would definitely give options to, to members, having listened to them and understood what direction they wanted to, uh, to take. Um, I would also hopefully uh, focus a little bit on the, on the gender uh, perspective and make sure that the issues, you know, on, on the empowerment of women, of women in trade, uh, the need to have uh, more women, I think, at the at the at the at the um, top of the organization uh, you know issues such as that which are very close to my heart which i've worked on for many many years uh, those are issues that uh, that would, would drive me but for me um the need to actually reform the organization right because i have seen it work really well i have you know i've been here during very exciting times and i think it was also here when we're negotiating all the time, day, night, evening, morning, and getting concrete results for the multilateral trading system. Uh, so that's what I would really um, want to, to see, to feel, to participate in. It, it's a wonderful uh, experience to have. Thank you very much. Let's take some WebEx questions now. And Minister, you can hear the questions with, you, with your earpiece there. Let's go first to, um, to Ling Xin from Xinhua News Agency of China. Shin, you have the floor, Thank please. You, Thank you, Keith. Good afternoon. Uh, Madam Minister, uh, Xin from Xinhua News Agency. My question is, uh, we know that WTO is a member-driven organization, but this nature of organization may become the excuse of inaction of the Director General. So if selected as, as DG, will you be ambitious enough to be more engaged in helping resolve maybe bilateral trade tension among uh, major members to play a more active role to help de-escalate those trade tensions? Uh, if yes, with limited mandate that the DG can have, what tactics or strategies will you plan to use? Thank you. Well, thank you uh, very much. Um, it's true that um, the DG may not have many powers, uh, but he has convening power. He has engagement powers. Um, he has, I think, the ability uh, to, to knock doors, be invited in, and have uh, you know, substantive discussions with members. 
it's also uh, true that the, the DG encourages members in a certain direction. Um, you know, um, directions of, uh, of, of ensuring that uh, the negotiating, um, you know, function of this organization is, is resumed, um, uh, but also offering his good offices, right, for when there are issues uh, that need to be, to be resolved among, among members, encouraging them to resolve these issues within the uh, systems that exist in the WTO and not going outside them. You know, so, so the powers may be limited, but I think that the influence is, is, is amazing and I think it can be used very positively uh, to move the work of the organization forward, uh, to encourage um, government to resolve any uh, challenges, any issues that they may have within the system um, uh, itself, and to see whether, in fact, um, the reasons for uh, non-engagement is because the rules may be outdated and not in sync with the, uh, uh, you know, dev developments in the in the global economy. Uh, you know, so so the DG has, uh, I think, the the power to bring issues to the attention of members as well and to uh, request them uh, to to engage on those on those uh, on those issues. Uh, so it's, uh, it's the powers are few, but the influence is great, and if it's used positively, uh, we'll get good results. Thank you very much. Let's go to another question from WebEx, this time from Washington, D.C., and Doug Palmer of Politico. Doug, you have the floor, please. Hi, uh, this is uh, Doug Palmer for Politico. Thanks for calling on me, Keith, and thank you, uh, Minister, for, for doing this press conference. Um, well, I guess I just I, I thought I would ask the question, uh, what is your view on whether it's time for an African or a woman to lead the WTO. And then secondly, um, the, the developing um, country status issue is a real concern uh, for the Trump administration and I would say the US generally. Um, how would you navigate around that issue to, to address some of the issues that the, the United States is, is raising? Well, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Doug. Uh, first of all, I think we're looking for um, a director general who is competent, uh, who understands the issues, who uh, you know, knows the, uh, the system, and who can be uh, supportive of, of members' ambitions uh, to, uh, to negotiate, to, to, to participate in the multilateral trading uh, environment. And so I, I, I don't know whether it's about much of, a, of being female or not, uh, but if a female has that expertise, that experience, the skills that are required, and the leadership qualities that are needed, uh, so much the better. Um, I think then it would be very, very positive to, to have a woman. I don't think you should have a woman because uh, you feel that a woman should, should hold this post at this uh, specific time. I think it's important that uh, the woman that is chosen is uh, capable of uh, supporting uh, this system of, uh, of um, leading the, the um, secretariat. Um, and doing the work that uh, that must that need to be to be done that needs to be done uh, on the on the um, on the issue of uh, of um, the development and the categorization of countries I think that's a matter for uh, for members to uh, negotiate and agree on I think the only um, category of membership uh, that is um, that has been defined is the LDCs, and it's defined using uh, UN, uh, you know, definitions. So, uh, so for the rest, I think um, it's up to the members uh, to work on it, to negotiate, to decide uh, whether that's um, an issue that is, is, um, is um, you know, ripe for, for, um, for negotiations and discussions. It's not something that the director general, uh, you know, can, can discuss uh, or can and, you know, you can't negotiate a country out of a category as director general. So I think that um, it's not part of your job des description. Thank you very much. Now let's take a question from the floor, and it's uh, how can, uh, can you, have the, you have the floor, please? Good evening, madam. I'm Angela from Chinese uh, uh, News Agency, Sina.com. As we can see, you have been a key figure in WTO, and you are such a, a powerful and influential woman. And as we could say, if you if you could if you have a good solution of reforming the WTO, why you didn't do it before, but uh, you think you can do it now and in a different way? So how how that change happened? And also, what exactly one person's influence 
how important one person's influence is could wait on the reform of the WTO. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. I think that's an excellent um, yeah, question. Um, the members themselves, the members of this organization, have been talking about the reform of the organization. Uh, so it's not something that uh, the WTO Director General is bringing to the table. It's something that the members themselves feel is necessary and that should be undertaken at this time. Now, what they don't agree is on uh, which reforms should take place. But that the, the organization should be reformed, I think that's agreed. I think it's something that everybody talks about. Uh, WTO, and I think that's uh, also something that is, um, is, is well known, is at a crossroads. You know? It either reforms, right, uh, or um, I think it completely fails. Yeah? And so, so the membership needs to agree, to come together and agree on what reforms should take place, what priority they want to attach to the reforms, uh, the sequence of the, of, the, of the reforms, how they want to renew this organization so that it can serve them better. Uh, you know, that's a decision for the members to take. Uh, but I think, you know, I, I also come from a member state. I also come from a member state, and, and the, the, the discussions uh, around and the conversations around reform have been going on for a while now at the WTO. Um, when I was here, when I was here, and that's why I talked about negotiating in different corners of this of these corridors, um, you know, the WTO was a beehive of activity. It was a beehive of activity. We managed to amend the TRIPS agreement. Very difficult, but it was possible, right? Because everybody right, had that feel good, um, you know, uh, and, and, and they wanted to, to, to achieve something. Everybody was interested in, in, in making sure that there were outcomes, concrete outcomes. Um, that's not the case right now. It's different. It's different. Uh, from 2015, when we had the Nairobi Ministerial and had outcomes, concrete outcomes, ITA, um, export subsidies prohibition, uh, you know, not much has happened. N not m much negotiation has happened uh, in the WTO. Uh, and that's why Members are talking about the need for reform. Um, but now they actually need to sit down and agree on what reforms should take place. Thank you very much. The next question is for Sebastian from Swiss TV. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much, Sebastian, Swiss Television. Uh, what would be your approach to address the uh, growing trade tensions between the US and China? What would be my approach? My approach would be. Uh, if I had the opportunity to leave this organization, would be to encourage all members to resolve any disputes, any issues that they may have, any tensions within the WTO rules. Um, and that would be my, my, um, the position that I would take, uh, that I would encourage them to do it within the rules. Uh, if the disputes are, um, and the tension is about trade, uh, we have a multilateral trading system uh, that should be used to resolve uh, you know, those, uh, those, those tensions. Uh, so I'll just refer them to the WTO rules. Thank you very much. Let's take another WebEx question, please. This is, from, uh, this is a question for Ayana Dreyer from Bordelex in Belgium. Ayana, you have the floor, please. <laughs> Hello. Uh, thank you, Keith. Um, hello. Uh, Madam Mohammed, Ambassador and Minister, um, I have a question. How concretely would you address the issue of Ahmed Boy? Uh, what concrete steps would you step, uh, would you take if you were there? Uh, and uh, what role do you see for African countries in this uh, reform of the Ahmed body in this whole discussion about? So I chaired the dispute settlement body uh, here at the, at the WTO, and the appellate body was the crown jewel. Um, I think that uh, the membership, and I would encourage them to do that, should negotiate and get it back in place. Uh, I think it's really important that we have an appellate, appellate body. There are reasons why it doesn't exist anymore. Those reasons must be addressed. The concerns that governments have expressed on the workings of the appellate body should be addressed uh, by the membership uh, so that eventually we can actually have negotiations on reinstating a uh, reformed uh, appellate body. Um, what role would the African uh, countries play? Um, I think they would play the same role as every other member of the, of the organization. Um, the only thing that uh, we would obviously um, 
uh, require and that uh, the DGWTO can offer is additional capacity building and technical assistance uh, so that there's greater participation uh, by these countries uh, in the negotiations for a reformed appellate body. Thank you very much. Let's uh, go back to Washington and take a question from Hannah Monikin of Inside U.S. Trade. Hannah, you have the floor, please. Uh, th <clears throat> thanks, Keith. Good afternoon, uh, Minister. Uh, you know, you've talked a lot about reform, and I think everyone agrees that um, reform is needed. Uh, and just to follow up on some of what you've said, how do you think that you can move reform? forward, and in particular, do you envision that there should be sort of a large reform agenda or negotiating round, or would you favor more of an incremental approach, and how would the upcoming ministerial conference factor into your thoughts on reform? Well, uh, thank you very much. I think my, my role as uh, Director General, if selected, would be to just encourage members uh, to engage on, uh, you know, the reforms that they have been, um, you know, discussing, uh, to decide uh, on which reforms uh, should be negotiated and, uh, and carried out, and um, um, sequence these reforms if they so, so wish. I think it's a role for the membership of the WTO, uh, you know, to play. As, as DG, um, I would offer good offices, of course. I would have discussions with different members uh, to understand, uh, you know, what, they are, what the issues were and what they would like to see happen. I would see whether we can actually create convergence, uh, you know, among different, uh, different uh, countries and groups of, uh, of, of, of countries. Um, I would hope that uh, by the time we get to, uh, to Kazakhstan for the, for the ministerial, uh, that there would be some clarity as to what kind of reforms um, um, are needed and, and required. Uh, you know, listening to, uh, to members, um, you know, over the, 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 the long term, I think the reforms that, that they've talked about uh, include, uh, but, you know, this is not an exhaustive list, but includes, you know, the, 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 the um, dispute settlement um, system and the need uh, to address some of the shortcomings, some of the concerns that, that governments have. Uh, they, they, they have talked about notification and the need to make that a little bit tighter maybe for some, some countries. Uh, they've talked about the negotiating function of the WTO uh, to make sure that we actually get results and outcomes uh, for, for negotiations that I think need to take place. And uh, that's why this, this place exists uh, to be able to, uh, to negotiate uh, rules. They've talked about upgrading the, the rule book. Uh, uh, and you know, so, so there's so many issues that have been discussed and that need to be, uh, to be addressed. Uh, but that's something that the membership uh, needs to do. As Director General, you encourage, you nudge, uh, you provide uh, you know, the space to do that. Uh, you also create an environment that allows members to be able to sit down and negotiate. Thank you. We have time for one more question. This is a WhatsApp question from Philip Blankensop of Reuters in Brussels. And his question to you, Minister, is, do you think it is Africa's turn to lead the WTO? If so, why could Africa not unite around one candidate and will the fact that it has not hinder the chances of the three names put forward? Well, I think it's the prerogative of the membership to decide, um, you know, who uh, will be uh, selected. Um, I think Africa takes the WTO very seriously. And that's the reason why the caliber of the candidates that have come forward yeah, is, so, is so distinct and so high. Um, uh, you know, and, and I don't think that Africa should be penalized for putting forward, uh, you know, a number of candidates. There are 54 countries on the continent, after all, uh, uh, you know, and we have different, um, you know, parts of that, the, the conference, uh, the, the continent. So, so basically, um, I think that uh, one should not be penalized for putting uh, candidates up um, uh, to take up, uh, you know, a position uh, that Africans attach a lot of importance to, and uh, that they feel um, that they need to take very seriously. Um, you know, so I think that it's not a matter of weakness to have three candidates. I think it's actually a matter of strength. It shows how interested we are, how seriously we take the WTO. And, um, uh, you know, putting up this, uh, these candidates, I mean, the three of us are all uh, very accomplished in our own right. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it wasn't an, uh, it wasn't um, a decision to put uh, just any candidates forward. I think they put down, uh, you know, heavyweights uh, in, in Africa. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, Africa should be commended for doing that. And, uh, you know, I do hope that uh, of the three uh, African candidates uh, that I've talked about, that, um, uh, that the membership will actually give serious consideration uh, to having a leader uh, from Africa. Uh, I think Africa has a big contribution to make. Um, it is a continent that has a lot of potential. Um, it is a con continent that is young and uh, inspirational. And so I'm hoping that uh, the membership will give that um, a serious consideration. Thank you. Minister Mohammed. we thank you very much for participating in this press conference. My thanks to all of you for coming and to all of you who have participated via social media, through WebEx and uh, WhatsApp. I would ask, please, that journalists interested in speaking with Minister Mohammed, please do not block this corridor here. If you're interested in speaking with her or members of her delegation, you should meet upstairs in the members' lounge. Uh, we cannot have this corridor here blocked, so please keep it free. Thank you again, Minister, and all the best this evening. Thank you again.